Well, hello there, friends. I got a question for you. Do you know the order of the colors of the rainbow? Because I do. In fact, I'm wearing it right here. It would be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, violet, if you fancy. Boys and girls, the cool thing about the order of the colors in the rainbow is that the first three colors in the rainbow, that would be red, orange, and yellow, those are the warm colors. And then the last three colors in the a rainbow, green, blue, and purple, violet, if you fancy. Those are the cool colors. Some people like to remember the order of the colors in the rainbow by remembering the name Roy G. Biv. R is for red, O is for orange, Y is for yellow, G is for green, B is for blue, I for indigo, which my rainbow seems to be lacking. Indigo is a fancy talk for dark blue, and V is for violet. So there's actually, if you're going by Roy G. Biff, seven colors in the rainbow, but my hat and your art project will only have six. Let's talk about what we're making today, shall we? Check this out. I have a book. It is my rainbow book, and it looks like any simple kind of smallish book, but wait, there's more. When you take this bead and you slide it away like so, you can then open the book, and it doesn't open like any average book. Oh, check this out. It's a rainbow book, one that will help me remember the orders of the color in the rainbow, and it's quite the most amazing thing, and surprisingly, it's not that hard to make. So let's talk about how you can make your very own rainbow book today. Boys and girls, today we're going to learn how to make a rainbow book. This book is pretty amazing because it looks like uh, just a flat book, but when you open it up like a book and keep opening and opening... Ooh la la, it's a rainbow book. And to get the rainbow book to stay open, to make it into a wall hanging, it has a little bead that slides down and holds it in place. And it can also act as a hanger for you to hang up your amazing rainbow book. To close it, slide the bead back and gently fold it back together again pretty amazing and you'll be surprised how easy this is to make as long of course as you follow directions so the first thing we're going to use are two small pieces of cardboard these pieces of cardboard are three inch squares meaning it's three inches all the way around you need two pieces one for the back cover and one for the front cover you'll also need six pieces of paper. You don't have to make a rainbow book, but because we are, I chose six pieces of paper that are the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. My rainbow is missing indigo, but because the book can only have six pages, that's the color that I decided to leave out. I also need two pieces of paper for my front and back cover. All of these papers are six inch squares. You could use plain paper. I like to use paper that has a cool texture on it. I'll need my string and a bead and some glue. So to get started, let's begin with the cover. To make the cover of your book, I'm going to move some of these other things out of the way. The first thing I'm going to do is take my paper and I'm going to be gluing this piece of cardboard right in the middle, just like that. You could use cardboard from an old cereal box or a granola box, anything that you can find. Just make sure you have a three inch square. I've got my glue. You could use a glue bottle. I love to paint my glue because I can get this glue nice and smooth, and that's important. We don't want our cover to be lumpy and bumpy with glue. So I put the glue around the edges. Now I'll flip it over, press it down, and flip it back to the front, and massage. Ah, oh, paper likey. Now that I've done that to one, I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. Now that both of my covers are finished, what I'm going to do is trim a diagonal line right there. Trimming a diagonal line at the corners. Watch, I'll show you. I've got my scissors. 
And I want a diagonal line that goes just like this. So I'm taking my scissors, trim a diagonal line so it becomes a triangle when I cut it off. Rotate, trim a diagonal line, triangle, and I'll be doing the exact same thing to the other one in just a moment. So now that I've got all those trimmed, I have a shape that's called an octagon. An octagon has eight sides. If it looks like a stop sign, then you are correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight sides. That makes an octagon. Now I need to bend these sides inward like this. So I'm going to paint glue again on the cardboard. Paint a line of glue. Fold this in and massage. And it helps to use one hand to hold this still. If you don't hold it, then you're not giving the glue enough time to dry and grab onto that paper a little bit. So give it some good glue grab time and then turn. If it does pop out, that just means you didn't give it enough glue grab time. It doesn't mean that you need more glue. It just means you need more time to hold it, to let the glue grab, and make sure to bend this all the way into the edge. Rotate it. I'm still holding to give that glue some grab time. Paint the glue. Bend it in. I'm folding it all the way in, all the way to the cardboard. Last one. Now that I'm done with this one, I'll be doing the exact same thing to the other piece of paper. So paint this, fold it in, make sure to push it all the way in, and give it some glue grab time. And now I'm going to work on the other paper. Now I have my front and my back cover. Now what I'm going to do is rotate both of these squares until they become diamonds. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap, not quite the size of a finger right there. Through the diamond, I'm going to paint with my glue a horizontal line. If you're using a glue bottle, you would just draw a line of glue going through the middle of your diamond. Now I'm going to take my string and I'll find the middle of my string. I'm making sure to leave that little tiny space. That's important. Not quite the size of your finger. I've got my string and I will fold it and that will help me find the middle. And this middle is going to go in that little space right there. So I'll move these back down, leaving that little space right there. Lay my string down, making sure that the middle part that I just found was right there, and I'm just going to gently tap just like that. Now this needs to dry so that that glue has enough grab time, and I can't really massage this too much because the yarn is so small. So now that that's finished, I can start working on the pages of my book. My front cover and my back cover are complete. Now let's create the pages for our book. I'm going to teach you one fold. You'll do the same exact thing for all six papers. So take one piece of paper and you're going to fold it in half, bringing the bottom to the top. Once you've got those edges matched up, press very firmly with your finger. You want this to be a really nice crease. Okay, open it. Now you're going to fold it from this side to the other side. Just a moment ago, you went from the bottom to the top. Now we opened it. We're going to go from the right to the left, making sure to press really hard so that you have a good crease. 
All right. When you open your paper, you should have a vertical line and a horizontal line. Now I want you to turn your paper over, rotate it so it's a diamond, take the bottom of the diamond to the top. Making sure to press firmly and open. Now you should have a diamond that has an X and a horizontal line. Now you're going to hold your paper like this, push the middle part up, and because of how you folded it, your paper should naturally want to fold in. So I'm pushing in the sides of that diamond until I have a smaller diamond. And now I'm going to go ahead and push it all down so it stays nice and flat. I'm going to do this again so you can watch me. So once more, I'm push that off to the side because I'm done with one. My paper goes from the bottom to the top. Creasing. Open. From one side to the other side, pressing firmly, open, flip it over, rotate to a diamond, bring the bottom to the top, press, press, open, push up from the middle, boop, and as soon as you do that, it naturally goes in, and massage. I'm going to do that to the rest of my papers. I have four more papers to do that to, so I'm going to do that right now. Now that I've got my cover made and all my papers folded, I'm ready to assemble or put together my book. But it's important that you do it correctly so that your book actually opens up. The side where you have that little gap of yarn, this will be like the spine of the book or the back of the book. The side where the string is long is going to be where your book opens. So it's important that you use the open side of your papers that you just folded. Take a look at this paper. This closed part, this will be a part of the spine. This part that opens will be a part of the open part of the book. If you don't do this part correctly, your book will not open, so make sure you pay close attention. So let me get my covers. Hopefully that glue has dried. And now I see that this middle part is my spine. So basically any part of your folded paper that's got this point right here, this point right here is going to be at the spine. So the open part, I can even open it a little bit like a mouth this is going to be on the open side. So to glue it, all you have to do to start, oops, is you're going to use your glue one more time. And I'm going to be painting the glue, 
like a square and I'm trying really hard not to get close to my edges because I don't want to accidentally have so much glue that my book ends up gluing itself together. I'm going to set this. There's the pointed end. It meets up with my spine and I'll try to put this about in the center of that cover. So I'm leaving an even amount of space around the sides and I'll just go ahead and give it a massage. Ah, oh, paper likey. To check and make sure I did it right, I'm going to put my finger right here, make sure that it opens. Yep, there's the open part, and that closed part is next to the spine. Now, I want this to look like a rainbow. Red goes first in the rainbow. Notice I'm giving that glue enough grab time. That's why I keep massaging it. Now I know that orange comes next. So let's take a look at this one. There's the closed side. I know that it's got to meet up with that spine. I'm going to glue. So I'm going to put a square of glue here, stacking one right on top of the other. Spine to spine, open to open. Get them matched up so they're nice and even the best I can. And massage. As long as you pay close attention to where you're gluing things, you will do just fine. How do you know where to glue stuff? Spine, pointy side, open part, where the long string is. Piece of cake. I'm going to finish gluing the rest of the pages of my book together. Your last step is you're going to paint a square of glue around that last piece of paper. And then you're going to close your book, making sure that it's all matched up. And you're going to have to hold this for a while. Press really firmly to get that to stay. When your glue is all dry, you're going to take the ends of your string, twist them together, and slide your bead down. And tie a knot at the end, and I'm doing an overhand knot at the end. And now, um, I've waited for my glue to dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slide the bead back, and I can open up my book. If anything comes unglued, just glue it back together and let it sit. And now you can decorate the front of your rainbow book with some rainbow designs.